I've always been fascinated by the past. That's why I'm drawn to antique stores. They are like the beaches of time. Bits and pieces of people's lives drift ashore here, and like driftwood, they get jumbled together. My friend Jack loved antique stores even more than I did. Maybe because he always seemed someone who lived in the wrong time. I knew he was unhappy and you could tell because in every picture of him, he was never smiling. He always longed for the past, for an old fashioned girl to share his life with. Jack wanted to live in simpler times. One day, Jack disappeared. Nobody knew where he went. Before he vanished, he sent me a photo of an old post office building. I remembered it was a building Jack and I had once explored. On the back of the photo, he'd written a cryptic message. 524CR. I thought the picture and the message might be a clue to his disappearance. So I went to the old post office. It was a beat up old building down an abandoned road. It had closed a hundred years earlier and was deserted, untouched, forgotten. Jack liked buildings like this. With a little imagination, he said, one could bring them back to life. Their decay was evocative. He said you could hear in the wind the whispered conversations of bygone times. I found a broken window and went inside. It was dark, creepy. Walking through it, my footsteps echoed like memories. I realized the number on the back of the photo, 524, was a post office box number. It took a while, but I found it. The letters must be the combination to the box. I spun the dials and sure enough, it opened. Inside was a business card for a photographer by the name of Jennings. He specialized in time exposures, whatever they were. On the back of the card, another note from Jack suggested I visit the photographer as he had. And so I did. I felt like I was in a dream as I approached his door. The photographer listened quietly as I told him how I'd gotten his business card from a friend, how my friend had suggested I pay him a visit as he had. I asked him about time exposures. The photographer studied the card and me a moment and then explained what was going on. His story was quite incredible. He told me that people like Jack, people who felt they lived in the wrong time, came to him for help. He took their portrait with a very special camera he had, one his grandfather had gotten from a mysterious scientist many, many years ago. The camera, like all cameras, dealt with time. But this camera didn't capture an instant and freeze it for eternity. No, this camera had the ability to send whoever sat before it back in time, 20, 50, even 100 years. People would sit for a portrait. The photographer would adjust the camera, set the dial two years into the past, and click the shutter. They would vanish from the present and appear in the past, in this same studio, 
sitting for a portrait being taken by his grandfather. I told the photographer I found his story hard to believe. Then he showed me the album. He explained it was an album of photographs his grandfather had taken and that all the people in the photographs were from the future. A blank page awaited another time traveler. I looked through the album as the photographer said that people wanted to escape their time for many reasons. A love gone wrong, crushing debts, or, like Jack, just longing for simpler times. I still doubted his story. But then I found a picture of Jack. At first, I couldn't believe my eyes. But it was Jack all right, and happy for a change. I was stunned. It didn't seem possible, but there was Jack, smiling out at me from a photo taken a century ago. The photographer said Jack was a clever fellow. Usually, time travelers had no way to communicate with the future. But Jack had found a building that had closed shortly after he went back in time, a building that remained abandoned and deserted for a century, a building full of locked boxes that even vandals could not open. Whatever Jack placed in that post box in the past would remain there until the present. Maybe, the photographer wondered, Jack had sent me another message. So I returned to that dark, abandoned post office and to box 524. When I opened it, sure enough, there was a packet and an old photograph. The picture showed Jack and a pretty girl. He had written on it that it was his wife. Jack had found his old-fashioned gal. The packet contained some photographs and a letter. The picture showed a few scenes of his life back in the past. The letter told his story. My dear friend, as you must know by now, I have journeyed back to the past, to a simpler time, a wonderful time. I met a charming girl and we were married. We will be moving away, so I will not be able to send you anything more. My memory of the future is fading, and soon I will no longer recall anything of my life in your time. That is fine with me, as it was not a time I ever felt comfortable in. Here are some photographs of the world I live in now. Why not come back and join us here? I am sure you would love it. Your friend for all time, Jack. As I read his letter and looked at his photographs, I realized with sadness that Jack was long gone. He would have died sometime in the 30s or 40s, no doubt, a good half century before he was born and grew to be the Jack I knew. I'm not sure how I could be friends with a man who died before he was born, but the photographer had warned me that time travel was full of paradoxes with questions best left unasked because they could not be answered. After my experience with my time-traveling friend Jack, I found antique stores even more intriguing. Some of the objects seemed very familiar. I was certain that some of them were owned by my friend Jack. They had drifted through time and washed up here, bits of the past that had found their way to the future. I was especially drawn to old pictures. I remembered that album in the photographer's studio and wondered not just who the people were, but when they might be from. Were some of them travelers from the future gone back to live in simpler times? For some reason, I was still drawn to that old post office. 
I'm not sure why. Maybe I sensed its shadows held a final mystery. So I went back, back to that deserted old building, back to box 524, to spin the dials again and see if there was anything inside. And sure enough, when I opened the box, there was a photo. Not of Jack. No, it wasn't Jack. It was someone else. Someone even more surprising. It was me. There I was, clearly in the past, looking across the years at myself today. Like Jack, I had stood in this exact spot and put that picture of myself in this very box a century ago so that I could find it today and know I went back in time. I left the post office and headed back to the photographer to fulfill my destiny. I walked down that dark, dreamlike hallway to his studio. I was ready to sit before his magic camera and journey back in time as I knew I already had. It was my turn to fill in a blank page in his album. Like my friend Jack, I felt the pull of simpler times. No surprise, really. I've always been fascinated by the past. <laughs>